Hi, I'm Walt, and this is Delta Astrophotography. About four months ago, I finally decided it was time to break down and buy myself a new telescope, and I settled on this, the Ascar 103 APO. Now, at the time, I took a risk because there wasn't a lot of information or videos out there about this telescope. Now, there are definitely a few more, but still not a ton, so I figured we would talk about it today and see if this budget-friendly, rather large refractor telescope is worth it. Well, find out in today's episode of... I have no idea! Ugh, 275 millimeters is just not cutting it for what I want to shoot these days. After over two years, it's finally time for a new telescope. One hour later. This is the Ascar 103 APO by Sharpstar. It's a triplet apochromatic refractor telescope. That means it uses three glass elements, one of which is ED glass or extra low dispersion glass to correct for chromatic aberration, also known as color fringing, also known as purplish blobs or halos around your stars. It has a native focal length of 700 millimeters and an F ratio of F6.8. Without any accessories, it comes in around 12 pounds or about five and a half kilograms. So it works with most go-to mounts. And this thing is going for a price of around $1,000. What? what? You, you can't, can't be, be serious. serious. Yeah, as you can see, a lot of telescopes with similar specs go for well over $2,000. So this is definitely a nice refractor for somebody who's on a budget. At that low price point, is this thing even worth a crap? Well, we're gonna find out in a few minutes. Let's just look over a few more details about this telescope. It has quite a long retractable dew shield with a locking knob at the top. So when you get it out, you can lock it down. And that significantly increases the length of this telescope. It's got a nice sturdy set of rings with some ring locks right here, a long dovetail, making it easy to get your declination balance for those of us who still balance our telescopes. Yeah, we can't all afford AM5s. It's got a nice handle at the top that makes it easy to carry around. But it also doubles as a center style bracket so you can mount your guide scope right here to the handle. It's got two additional center style brackets on the back that allow me to mount accessories such as an ASI Air or my Pegasus Power Box. For the Pegasus Power Box, I actually had to get on a Gina Astro and order some mounting hardware from Buckeye Stargazer, I think that's what they're called. I can't quite remember. But um, yeah, they sent me a little center style shoe so I can mount it right on here. It's got a dual speed rack and pinion focuser with a nice little orange golden fine focus knob and 10 centimeters of focus play. The focus feels fairly smooth. Typically about four centimeters is where focus is on all my cameras. Once you get focus to where you like, you've got a locking mechanism down here so you can go ahead and lock your focus in. Once your focus is locked, you can do fine adjustments with our fine focus knob right here. It has a 360 degree rotator with scales so you can actually get precise rotation of your camera. And when you're done, it also has a locking knob, so you can screw that down, lock your rotation down, then it won't move. At the back of the telescope, we can see it has a visual back. If you have a 1.2 inch eyepiece, just pull this plug out right here, and that will go in right here. If you have a two inch eyepiece, we can just take the front part off. So that just comes right out, and that gives you a bigger hole to plug in a two inch eyepiece. And I think I've got one around here somewhere. I just, I just saw it. Oh, hey, there it is. Can I see that for a second? This? Oh, I thought, I thought it was, it was a, a space, space pipe. pipe. Yeah, that's not, no. There we go, now I can see what kind of shenanigans old Fred down the road's getting into. 
All right. Now, of course, most of us are here for astrophotography and not visual astronomy. So if you want to take pictures through this telescope, you're going to need to buy a flattener or one of the two reducers. Now, this telescope is marketed as being very versatile because they make those three accessories, the one times flattener, the 0.8 reducer, and the 0.6 reducer. The one times flattener keeps it at its native focal length of 700 millimeters. The 0.8 reducer brings it down to, I think, 560 millimeters at f5.4, and the 0.6 reducer brings it down to 420 millimeters at a very fast f4. Now, all of these are sold separately and they're between two and three hundred dollars. So if you buy this scope for astrophotography, you're not just spending a thousand dollars, you're at least spending twelve hundred. So keep that in mind. Now, I personally wanted to shoot at a focal length of 700 millimeters. That's why I got this scope. So I went with the one times flattener and this is pretty much what I'm going to be focusing on. And here it is, the one time flattener. So if we want to put this on, we'll just unscrew the visual back. Take the top cap off the flattener and thread it right onto the back of the telescope. Now to add a camera, let's just take the cap off the back of the flattener or reducer, whichever one you have. The threads back here are M48. So if you're using a DSLR camera, you'll want to get this M48 T-ring adapter. that just attaches right to the front of my camera, just like a lens. They've got the adapter on the camera now, and it just threads right on to the back of the scope. There we go. Now we're ready to shoot with a DSLR. And for a dedicated astronomy camera, it's the same as always. You just need the, the adapters and the spacers that come with your camera to get 55 millimeters of back focus. And now this is officially the longest telescope setup I've ever had. <laughs> about three feet from camera to lens cap. One very important note about the 0.6 reducer. Unlike the flattener and the 0.8 reducer that just screw right onto the back of the telescope, to install the 0.6 reducer, you actually have to take off this piece, this white piece right here. It has to, it has to go for that to work. And the way you do that is you unscrew the black section, the, uh, the focuser and rotator section, take that off. And you'll want to take your rings off. Try not to drop your very expensive new telescope. Got the rings here. And you can actually see, I don't know if you can see here, there's a line right here. You have to unscrew that part. Now we can screw our focuser back in. And reattach the rings. Now we've got a much shorter telescope and you can take that 0.6 reducer and just screw it in right back here. Another advantage of this configuration is now as it's compatible with bino viewers. So if you've got some of those or want some of those for visual astronomy, it works really well in this configuration. One of the things I like surprisingly a lot about this telescope is this nice hard case it came with. I don't think I've ever gotten a telescope or lens that came with a case this tough and sturdy. And it has this nice handle on the top as well as a shoulder strap. I just want to travel with this thing. I really do. <laughs> I think the only thing they could have done to improve it is put a few extra little slots in there for your flattener and reducers. But hey, I still like it. It's the small things, you know. Now it's time for the important part. How well does the telescope actually perform? How good do the photos look? So instead of showing you a bunch of pretty polished, processed pictures, we're going to look at some more raw, unprocessed data. Maybe not 100% raw because like the raw files are green and that's ugly. I might have done some correction. You'll see. All right, so the first set of frames we're going to look at are from a Canon 6D, which is a full frame camera. We're going to see what the stars look like with a full frame camera. I just took a photo of a area with stars without much nebulosity because I really just want to focus on what the stars look like for now. So let's open up a single raw FITS file. That's what it looks like. 
and you can see the stars are pretty green. This is, like I said, a just a raw file. Let's look at the stacked version of it. About 30 minutes worth of data stacked here. Not much has changed, it's still green. And so what I ended up doing is running a background extraction and color calibration on all of these just so we can get rid of all that green and kind of see what the natural colors look like. So this is what the raw file looks like with the background extraction and color calibration. Before we even looked at the stacked version, let's just kind of pick apart the single raw file. We kind of zoom in on some of these stars in the middle. They're pretty round, but what you're gonna notice on the really big stars is that they kind of have these little spiky areas around them. That's gonna be very common on this telescope. You're gonna notice it when you zoom in really close to the pixel level, but zoomed out, it's hardly noticeable at all and the stars look pretty round. But what I really wanna focus on is the corners. Corners are where you start having problems and the flattener's supposed to take care of that, but we'll see. Let's zoom right here. Okay, we see the very, very corner the stars are stretched out and have little comet tails. Zoom back out. But that's only in the very, very corner. We start moving away from that and the stars start to lose their comet tail. And they start getting round again. Let's look at all the corners. Let's look at this corner. Yep, we've got comet tails in that corner as well. Look in this corner. I can see a comet tail right there. So in all four corners, the stars get a little elongated and have little comet tails, but only right in the corners, they're pretty decent around the center. If I was to open up a crop, and I would normally crop my image something like this anyway. Let's go ahead and crop that. That would be my average crop, and now let's look at the corners. Yeah, completely normal. So it's only in the very, very corner. Not too bad. Not perfect, though. If we looked at the stacked version of that image, we're going to see the same thing. Looks pretty normal and decent with brown stars in the middle. And the same problems in the corners, just even more pronounced. Once again, I would definitely be cropping this image anyway because I've got stacking artifacts down here at the bottom. I'll probably crop it something like this. And now if we look down in the corner, once again, not too bad at all. All right, let's move on. Next, we're going to look at some images from the Tadpole Nebula taken with a ZWO ASI 294MC Pro. This is a micro four thirds camera, so it's a good bit more cropped in. It's a little more cropped in than a crop sensor camera. And we'll start by looking at a raw photo. You can tell it's raw because of the amp glow up here. Let's kind of look in the middle. Once again, this is not 100% raw. I've, I've done the background extraction and color calibration so we can actually see the natural colors and everything won't be green. Looks really good in the middle. Let's go down to the corner. And it's still looking pretty good in the corner. Maybe not quite perfect. Now, this star looks maybe slightly weird, but you know, that could be atmospheric turbulence for all I know. I'm definitely not seeing any really elongated stars or comet tails at all in this image. I'm looking at all the corners and they all look pretty much the same. There's just not much difference between the center and the corner in this image. Let's look at the stacked version. This is probably three hours worth of data right here. Once again, background's been removed, color calibration. Everything looks good in the middle. A lot cleaner since it's been stacked. Look at the corners, looking good, about the same. Corners look great. Now the final set of images are really what made me decide to get a new telescope and camera. The first set was taken with my Tamron 150 to 600. I'm trying to shoot the Triangulum Galaxy and that's a really good focal length for that. And first, let's just look at the Tamron. We're just gonna go ahead and look at the stacked file. That looks absolutely awful. You can see all these lines throughout the image this banding. I think a lot of this has to do with the fact that it was over 90 degrees at night and I'm shooting with a DSLR camera when I shot this. I think I shot this with a Canon T5i or 700D. But we're not really focused on the camera. Let's look at the stars. And if you kind of zoom in, one thing you'll notice is the stars with this lens for me were always a little either triangle shaped or egg shaped, but they had this problem where you can see some red 
on the left of the star, white in the middle, and blue on the right. And that just drove me crazy. I always thought that looked awful. Definitely got more triangular shaped stars in the corners. Look how bad that is. And this is a crop sensor camera. Oh, look how bad some of these stars are. Okay, anyway, now let's look at a stacked file with the ASCAR telescope. Boom, that is so much better. These stars look amazing. Look how nice and round they are. All nice and round, and we're going all the way into the corner. No cropping, still nice and round. Everything just looks great. I like how I'm seeing some color in these stars. They're looking nice and orange, like a good solid kind of orange color. They're not multicolored like the Tamron. So yeah, I think this is a pretty good looking telescope. So I think that performed pretty well. I mean, it wasn't 100% perfect with the full frame camera, but once you crop it in a little bit, it's great. And with any kind of cropped camera, it's just fine. I didn't see any color fringing or abnormally shaped stars. I thought it looked great, but I wanna hear what you think. Please let me know down in the comments below what you think of everything you saw, what you think of this telescope, if you've got one. Well, thanks for making it to the end of the video, guys. Uh, if you liked the video, please leave me a like and definitely subscribe if you wanna see more of my content. And I just wanna give a big shout out to all my patrons on Patreon. I love chatting with you guys. And if you want to support me in this channel, well, check out my Patreon. It's linked in the description below. Uh, you get access to my private Discord server and basically you get to give and chat with me and my patrons. And on the Patreon, you get uh, some extra content, some blooper reels, some life updates, and maybe a, a tutorial from time to time. So con please consider doing that. I'd love to see you over there. I hope everybody's getting good and geared up for the eclipse coming up. I haven't really made any definite travel plans because it's hard to plan a trip around weather, but apparently there's th three million people coming to the area nearest me where it's gonna be full. So I better get to planning soon. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. As always, stay spacey, clear skies, watch out for snakes. See you in the next one.